Hello, I'm Pete Sumrall, and today's teaching is a study on the altars and offerings unto the Most High. In the Old Testament, people like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gave offerings to God. These were blood offerings of goats, lambs, and other animals. Although it's not practiced today, it is still relevant to today's culture. So let's enjoy this message about altars and offerings unto the Most High by my father, Dr. Lester Sumrall. In the history of planet Earth, man has always built altars and made offerings and sacrifices to the Most High. Great men of God, such as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, often built altars at a place where they heard the voice of God. The meat of animals was sacrificed on these altars as an act of worship. Dr. Lester Summerall examines in detail the offerings and sacrifices made in the Old Testament and how they relate to the Christian walk today. We welcome you to our, our closed-in sanctuary and to our study area and to our preparation area where we come to you daily uh, with a teaching message. And we're delighted uh, to, to bring you to our place of comfort, <laughs> and to our place that we love so much, and to our place where we share. It, it's our sharing spot on the face of this earth. And we just, do we just love to share with you all the things that God puts within our spirit. We just share with you. And during this series uh, that we have called The Altars and the Offerings Under the Most High, the altars and what's offered on those altars under the Most High. We began with the birth of altars and offerings, and they began, of course, with Adam and Eve. We continued with those by studying the patriarchs. Each one of them had an altar and an offering unto God, and God had already instilled in their hearts just what to offer and how to offer it. A nation uh, comes uh, in, the, in the next aspect uh, where God dealt not only with a person or with a family, but with a whole country in offering an offering unto God. And then we studied that there were four uh, living creatures uh, that were offered to the Most High as a burnt offering unto God in a substitutionary way for the forgiveness of sins. And then we learned that there was a sin offering and a trespass offering. And the difference between the sin offering and the trespass offering was uh, sin has to do with a state of condition. We are born under sin. And the Bible says if a man says he has never sinned, he is a liar. And, and so uh, all men have sinned. And so an offering ordered, offering for sin in general. And then the trespass offering has to do with a particular thing that you have done uh, that you wish to have forgiveness for. We have now come to the peace offering and the wave offering. And I'm sure that, uh, that you will enjoy us getting into the peace offering and the wave offering. And you have your, your Bible there ready, I'm sure. We will begin in Leviticus chapter 7 and verse 11. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings. God was very specific. He didn't give you any, any playtime in there. <laughs> he said, this is the law concerning it. You don't do this way or that way as you please. You obey what he has said. He said, this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer unto the Lord. That's in Leviticus chapter 7, verse 11. If you go back a little to Levit Leviticus chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, and if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offerings, peace offering, if he offer it at the, of the herd, whether it be male or female, he shall offer it without blemish uh, before the Lord. If you'd like to read more on that, in the same chapter of chapter 3, you read verses 6, 7, and 9, verses 16 and, and 17, and it teaches you there uh, relative to that offering un, under the Lord, how it's to be handled and what you're to do with it. The peace offering uh, in Leviticus chapter 3 there is when you offer one of the animals that the Lord says you can offer in an offering to Him, and you offer of that life, and you offer it in obedience, uh, and you offer it because of, of your own desire and will toward the Lord. Uh, the peace offering is a relationship offering. It's a, an offering of communion with God. It is a sweet savor unto the Lord. In the peace offering we see uh, in our spiritual aspects that the Lord Jesus Christ, by His death, became our peace offering and the foundation of our fellowship with the Most High and that we receive His offering on Calvary 
as our peace offering to God, and it's the very foundation of our fellowship with God. In the peace offering, the offering itself was shared. Now, this is most interesting. It is shared with the priest and with the worshiper, and it's toward God. So actually, it was shared with God on the altar as a burnt offering. The priest ate part of it, and the worshiper had his share of it also. So this was true communion. Uh, when the man that came to worship uh, became a partner, you might say, with the priest and with God Almighty. The peace offering, number one now, was a, a voluntary offering. Uh, in, in Leviticus 19 and 5, it says, If ye offer a sacrifice of peace offerings under Jehovah, ye shall offer it at your own will. You ought to write that down. Uh, for, this, for this offering unto the Lord that would bring joy to his heart and peace to his life, uh, it was a voluntary offering. You offer it because you want to. You're not told to. You're not made to do it. It's not a sin offering. It is an offering where you wish to be jubilant before God. The peace offering was made to enjoy. And you were to enjoy a, a power that came from God and a blessing that came from God. And so it was a, a, an offering that kept peace between you and the Most High God. The peace offering could be given uh, to God in thankfulness for His many mercies that He had given unto you. It was sometime called the offering of thanksgiving. You find that in Leviticus chapter 7, verses 11 and 12 and 13 and 15 and 20, uh, that this offering could be also a thanksgiving offering. You know, something good had happened to you, a lovely boy born in your family, and he was such a beautiful child, and you loved him so very much, and you were just so happy you didn't know what to do about it, and that you offered this peace offering unto God, which was also accepted as a thanksgiving offering. The peace offering was offered, uh, for example, by many notable people, and I'll name a few of them. Uh, in 1 Kings 8 and 63, it was offered by King Solomon at the dedication of the famous temple that he erected under the Almighty. Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, and I'm reading to you <laughs> from verse 63. Uh, and Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered unto Jehovah, two and twenty thousand. Uh, now, this, this will blow your mind. Two and twenty thousand oxen, a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. Now, remember, in, in this peace offering, it was offered unto God, and part of it was burnt, part of it was eaten by the priest, part of it was eaten by the people. And so that's the reason it could, you get a, a whole nation of several million people worshiping there at the same time. It would take a lot in order for this to, to be a full for everybody. So there was nothing wasted and nothing stupid about it. Now, another uh, man in the Bible that, that uh, we have a record of that did this, the peace offering was offered by Hezekiah when he, when he terminated idolatry in the land of Israel. In 2 Chronicles chapter 30 and verse 22, you read these words. Hezekiah speak comfortably unto all the Levites. They were the ones that were to do the temple work. And that taught the good knowledge of the Lord. Isn't that sweet? They taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they did eat throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings and making con confession to the Lord of the Lord God of their fathers. And so when uh, it, it, it came the time uh, of great blessing in the land and of turning to God and, and was very happy because God had, had, uh, had blessed the land. Uh, he had come back in, into the land there and, and was making the land very prosperous and very blessed. And uh, the king Hezekiah said, I'm so glad for all of this, uh, that he spake comfortably, the king did, un under all of those that were serving in the temple. And they had a great feast lasting for seven days making peace offerings or thanksgiving offerings unto the Lord. Also, uh, King David uh, uh, is represented in the Bible in 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 17 that he offered peace offerings. It says, They brought the ark of the, the, ark of the Lord and, and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle. They had lost it to the enemy by doing something very foolish and taking it out to the battlefront when God had told them not to do it. In the midst, they thought it was something of a kind of a miracle thing you could turn off and on. God has never been that, never will be that. And if you're going to take him that way, you're going to miss him. Do my miracle for me. God does not do selfish things, and he doesn't do it. And they brought the ark of the Lord back. They set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David burnt, uh, burnt offerings and peace offerings. 
And again, those peace offerings are a very beautiful in that they are often Thanksgiving offerings. He was just so glad that the ark was back where it should be. It had been brought back out of enemy control and enemy hands and reestablished in the place of worship in Israel. And here was a man so glad for it that he offered unto the Lord burnt offerings, and then he offered unto the Lord peace offerings or thanksgiving offerings that saying, God, we give thanks that everything is so good with us, everything is so well with us. And many times we, uh, we do that. I know when I pastored in the Philippines, uh, uh, every Sunday morning, uh, the persons that had a birthday that week could bring an offering unto the Lord. And uh, they could also tell how old they were if they wanted to. And, and it was real interesting uh, how hundreds of them would come and, and bring their, 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 their rejoicing offering. They had had another a year of blessing from the Lord. They had been kept by the Lord. And they had a thanksgiving to say unto Him. And many of them w would give a peso for each year they had lived. And some would give a lot more than that. Uh, but anyway, it was a thanksgiving offering that they would make unto the Lord, and a rejoicing offering. And that's exactly what this was, a rejoicing offering for something that God had specifically performed in their lives. Now, this, uh, this offering, this peace offering, offering could also take the form of a vow. Uh, it could go a little deeper than just praising, for example. In Leviticus chapter 7 and verse 16, the worshiper uh, makes a vow to the Lord. It reads like this, But if the sacrifice of his offerings be a vow, or a voluntary offering, it should be eaten the same day that he offereth his sacrifice, and on the morrow also the remainder of it uh, should be eaten. And so he could say, Lord, I'm offering this offering unto you, and, and I'd like for you to know that I am going to do this for you. You see, uh, he could offer it also in the ways of, of, of consecration, we would say today. Uh, I'll sing, Lord, I'm going to, wherever you go, want me to go, I'll go. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. And, and, and here's my offering unto you of my thanksgiving and also my vow that I make unto you. And in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 21, uh, the word reads this way, And when thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, uh, thou, thou shalt not slack to pay it, for the, the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee. Don't ever promise God something you can't keep, because He expects you to keep whatever you promise Him. I will require it unto thee, and it will be a sin unto thee. You see, you break, you, you tell God, Oh Lord, I'll do this, and you don't do it. The Bible says you're a transgressor, that you have sinned unto him. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. You know, if you don't make any vows and you don't have any to keep. That which is gone out of thy lips, thou shalt keep and perform. Well, that would be good doctrine for today, wouldn't it? <laughs> so many people say they'll do things and they don't do them at all and don't even feel bad about it. But the Bible says if it comes out of your lips, you shall keep it and you shall perform it. And, uh, and, uh, and, and he means you to do that. Now he says, even a free will offering, uh, this is for the offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. So in, in this instance here is where you make a, a, a peace offering unto God, and the peace offering uh, is in, in relationship to a vow that you're going to make. Uh, you could have a thing like this when you get married. Bring a peace offering to the Lord and say, we have vowed to live together forever. Or you could make a peace offering uh, unto the Lord, which you said, now listen, Lord, I'm, I'm going to, pay you my tithes, I'm going to build this thing, and I'm going to pay you my tithes out of it. You could bring an offering unto the Lord at that time, saying, this is my vow. And the Lord says, once it's gone out of your lips, then you must keep it. The peace offering did not have a specific cause. It, it had, you know, a, a number of, of causes and reasons. Even the animal did not have to be perfect. You see, God wasn't making you do things like He did with the sin offering, where He says, now listen, no blemishes, because you want a clean slate. You want, you want, you want a pure uh, you want a pure conscience. And so uh, it, the, the animal that you offer has to be without blemish. Uh, in Leviticus 22 and 23, it says, uh, Either a bullock or a lamb that, thou hath, uh, that hath anything superfluous or lacking in his parts, uh, th thou mayest thou offer for a free will offering. You see, for your sins, God could not permit that. It had to be uh, an animal free of disease, free of any, any impediments. It couldn't have fallen down and, and limp a little bit or anything. But in your free will offering, but for a vow, uh, that's in a free will, but for a vow, it would not be accepted. Uh, if you're going to go deep into God, then you, you bring to the Lord the best and, and that, he might, uh, you know, under, uh, that He might give it to you. Now, in the peace offering, a worshiper could bring these. And in Leviticus 3 and 1, uh, if, if his, ob his ob oblation uh, be a sacrifice of a peace offering, 
if he offer it of the herd, whether it be male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. And so he can bring his peace offering of a bullock unto the Lord. And in Leviticus 3 and 7, the same chapter, the seventh verse, if he offer a lamb for his offering, then shall he offer it without blemish. And so if for he could offer a lamb. Now this was a free will offering. So you could offer either under the Lord. You could offer, uh, if you were well enough off and could afford it, you could offer a bullock. If you were not so well off, you could offer a lamb. And then in that same chapter, verse 12, and if his offering be a goat, you see, for your peace offering, uh, you weren't told what you had to offer. It, then he shall offer it before the Lord. And so you could offer uh, also a goat, which is further down the line uh, than the lamb or the sheep. And the animals were all of different values, you see. So the person uh, gave, actually, in his relationship to his desire for fellowship with God. Now, we, we find it exactly the same today. Uh, uh, there can be two people come to church, and they can both have the same job. They can both, say, make $500 a week. And, and, and one of them will be there rejoicing in the Lord. He, he drops in $100, just like that, to the Lord. The man sitting by there makes just as much money, drops in one dollar. And, and nobody's told him what to do. Nobody's told him what to do. And then you say, well, why, why the vast difference? Because of his happiness under the Lord, his, his personal relationships under the Lord, his faith that he has in his heart. And, and so uh, even uh, way back in, in the Old Testament, before we had Jesus, a man could give in proportion to how he felt on the inside of him. Isn't that beautiful? That is, unless it was a sin offering. When it became a sin offering, uh, then it was very specific what God wanted and what God desired. Uh, but in the peace offering uh, under the Lord, and the rejoicing offering under the Lord, uh, you could bring what you wish to bring unto God. Now, Christ's blood became our peace offering in the New Testament, and it brings us into fellowship with God. Uh, that is the person, the, 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 uh, the purpose of it, bringing us into peace with God, and we can bring our offerings to God. Everybody brings some kind of offering, and you bring it in relationship to the joy in your heart, the peace in your life, what God has done for you, and you'll always be glad when you bring the best. You will notice in, in, in Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 7, the peace, offering, uh, is, the peace offering is first after the sin offering and the trespass offering. So you get the, 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 the sin offering and the trespass offering, and then you're ready for the peace offering. Uh, you don't bring the peace offering before you bring the trespass offering. This means that a peace can only follow uh, the, the, the divine forgiveness. After you're forgiven, then you move into the, into the peace offering. Don't go offer to God, uh, a, you know, something you don't have. Uh, don't go offer to God, say, Lord, I love you when you don't love him. And uh, don't say, I praise you when you don't praise him, you know. You have to be honest about it. So you come to the salvation part of it first, and then you come into the glory part of it. That's very simple, I'm sure, for all of us. In the peace offering, the worshiper receives a portion of the sacrifice, and that makes it distinctive that in the peace offering, uh, you, in, uh, you, you become part of it, and you be it's because it's communion. It's joy, and it is communion. In Leviticus chapter 7, verse 15, the flesh of the sacrifice of the peace offerings for thanksgiving. You see, it can be used for thanksgiving also. I shall be eaten the same day it is offered, and shall not leave it until the following morning. So the flesh of the peace offering, they are for a thanksgiving offering unto them. But for, for if the sacrifice of this offering uh, be a vow, or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten the same day. It cannot be left over until that, uh, that, that second day uh, what, uh, whatsoever. He that offereth the sacrifice, on the morrow also the remainder of it shall be eaten. So the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying the entire offering had been accepted, but the worshiper has returned a portion of it unto the Lord. Isn't that great? It is simply great. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14, uh, we learn there very specifically that the Lord Jesus Christ is our peace offering. In Ephesians 2, 14, for he is our peace, who hath, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Christ has become your peace offering, my peace offering, and he's broken down anything that separates us from God, anything that causes us not to know God, not to serve God, not to be one with God. He has made us a part of that, the peace offering. Now, that is your peace offering. The wave, the wave offering in Leviticus 7 and 30, his own hand shall bring the uh, offerings of the Lord made by fire, the fat with the breast, it shall be brought, and the, and the breast be waved for a wave offering 
uh, before the Lord. And so we have the peace offering and the wave offering. And, and it shall be waved before the Lord. And as we, as we go into that uh, beautiful wave offering, uh, we, we see that how magnificent it is in that we wave an offering before the Lord for our joy that is set before us, for the peace uh, that is within our total being, for our, our heart. If you want to read more about uh, the wave offering, uh, it's in verse 11 that we wave our offering before the Lord, the offer of a lamb uh, without blemish uh, that we offer before the Lord. And it's God's offering, verse 14, it's God's offering, and it must be first before, uh, before uh, he could eat of the harvest. He has to offer it first before uh, he can partake of his own harvest. He must wave it before the Lord. And verses 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, uh, that is the type of offering uh, that was at the day of Pentecost uh, when they were receiving the great anointing of God, the great blessing of God. It's the wave offering that they were waving before the Lord. And isn't it magnificent to you and to me that in these blessed offerings, uh, uh, back in the Old Testament, and they received joy from them. They, they received forgiveness from them. They, they, the, the guilty conscience was gone. Uh, they, they received all the benefits from it, even though it was looking forward to the time when God's Lamb should come and, and take away the sins of all, and that we should, and we should receive after that the inflowing uh, of Pentecost, of, of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and the church was born, and, and wave our, our offering before the Lord, and, and rejoice in Him because of the mighty victories and the mighty power uh, He has to redeem us. It's beautiful that they of the Old Testament, as well as we of the New Testament, both receive the blessings of the Almighty. They received it looking forward to it, and we receive it looking back to it. And so we both receive of these great blessings. And this means that you can receive of the great anointing of God, the great power of God, and the great blessing of God. And that Jesus Christ has fulfilled all the divine requirements, every requirement there ever was for your life, for your sins, for your transgressions, or for your joy, or for your thanksgiving, or for any, any need that you might have, any of them, they are all fulfilled on Calvary. They're all fulfilled on that, that glorious time when Jesus Christ gave himself for the salvation of the total world. Consummated, consummated on the day of Pentecost when the glorious church of the Lord Jesus Christ was born. And now a living memorial down through the centuries unto this present moment. How glad we are that the Lord Jesus became all, total, <laughs> sufficient, and blessed, and that you and I move into that uh, with, with, with great anointing and, and, and great spirit, saying we want to thank you, Lord, for these mighty offerings and that were offered first in the olden days uh, when you said this is the law of the peace offering. And then you said uh, this is the law that has to do with the wave offering uh, un under the Lord that we shall wave unto him. And how, how glad we are that we became a part of this in our time. And we can look back and say, Lord, it certainly was good. All these things that you did uh, for your people in those days uh, that you have the fulfillment of it in our day and that we today have all that they had plus a little more. And that then when we have an understanding of all the things that God did for them, then we can rejoice in it. And that wave offering that I read to you in Leviticus chapter 7 and, and verse 30, where he said, his own hands will bring the offering of the Lord made by fire. His own hands. You know, you've got to be part of whatever you're doing toward God. Is so many times, if you are a professional, you know, you can say, bring me my shoes and uh, bring me a cup of coffee and bring me my car. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, when you come to God, it's a new story. Uh, we, we're all sinners together and, and we're all those without God and we need Him and, he, and we bring it with our own hands. Uh, we, a servant cannot bring it for us and another cannot come and take our place. We have to come personally and individually, and that's when God moves in to strengthen and to help us by His mighty power. And God is moving in there strong to help you right now. The Lord Jesus is the fulfillment of every altar that needs to be made on the face of the earth. And He is the complete consummate of every offering unto God that needs to be offered on the face of this earth. And He is the fulfillment of every human desire and every human need. And he's looking at you right now to help you and, and to bless you. Yes, uh, these old things are now completed. 
and they're finished. We no longer have to have an altar with these animals on it representing our needs and our sins. But today, the Lord Jesus has entered into the holy place, into the holy of holies in heaven, and he has already offered of his own precious blood, and you are forgiven. Won't you receive it today? Won't you receive it, please? Won't you accept it? He is your sacrifice. Calvary is your altar, and he wants to bless you right now. Only the devil could keep you from this blessing. Only Satan could keep you from receiving it. I urge you this very moment to accept him as a fulfilling of all altars, as a completion of all sacrifices, and all that you have to do at this moment is to receive him as your Lord and your Savior. If you will say, forgive me of my sins, I am sorry for my sins, he will forgive you right now. He wants to, and he is ready to do it. Are you ready? Lord, I believe you to bless my neighbor, bless that lady sitting there, and let this truth fall deep into her heart in a conviction of sin, and she will turn from her wickedness to serve God. And bless that man there, and help him not to be stubborn, but help him to yield himself to the Almighty. Bless him now, we pray. Right now, I believe you for the miracle of God. Right now, let him know that God in heaven has made all preparation. He must receive it and accept it at this moment. I believe you for it, and I thank you for it. Well, C Broadcasting is privileged to bring you these life-changing messages by Dr. Lester Sumrall. If you found today's teaching valuable, please consider supporting C Broadcasting with a generous gift to keep these teachings on the air. Call the number on the screen to find out more. I'm Pete Sumrall. Thanks for watching.